Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, this is Professor Khan giving you uh, sort of the second part of our module two presentations about the elements of fiction that we're focusing on in module two. And those are character and conflict. Uh, hopefully you've already watched the character presentation. We talked about a number of terms and concepts related to character that you will want to think about and use to some degree uh, in paper two. Now we're going to focus on conflict and talk a little bit about some of the terms and concepts that you'll need to uh, consider uh, as you, uh, you write, uh, think about and write about conflict in paper two. This presentation will be a little bit shorter. We don't have quite as many terms that we have to deal with. We'll begin by simply stating that conflict uh, in a short story is one type of juxtaposition. Juxtaposition that contrast against each other. They juxtapose each other. Uh, juxtapositions make stories interesting. Um, when we have uh, characters at odds with each other, you know, that can make things interesting. That can increase tension. Uh, when we have um, characters in conflict with themselves, when they have juxtaposing motivations or impulses, uh, that causes trouble, right? Uh, and that um, makes, makes stories interesting. That makes things a little bit more interesting. Um, think about uh, the story of an hour. You know, Louise Mallard hears about the death of her husband and she runs upstairs weeping and she sits in her room for an hour and she's having these really intense, this really intense emotional journey, this storm of thoughts and feelings. And yet outside her window is this beautiful, calm spring day with the birds, you know, tweeting and some music in the background. So we have this beautiful outdoor setting juxtaposed against the inner turmoil uh, inside of Louise Mallard's uh, mind and heart. So there's an example of juxtaposition that involves setting. You know, juxtapositions, conflicts, these things make stories interesting. Uh, in my composition one class, we kick off the, the class by writing a personal narrative. And I'm, I'm sure you've done this before, either in your comp one class or some other class. You know, just a short story about yourself. We call this expressive writing. And I tell my students, look, I want you to write about something that happened to you that was a problem. You know, some some time in your life when you had to deal with some sort of obstacle or issue or problem or conflict uh, that caused you to change a little bit. And I want that story to be, you know, very short and I want it to be, you know, something that happened over the course of a few minutes or an hour or something like that. You know, something very something very focused. And I, I tell my students that, you know, look. Uh, the day that you, you know, went home from school and uh, your parents were uh, in a great mood, uh, your dad got the raise at work and your mom got the, uh, the new project assigned to her by her boss and both of them came home and made a, a, an absolutely exquisite dinner and, you know, your older sister um, uh, just uh, got engaged to a wonderful person and you just got an A plus on all of your tests and uh, you're graduating and you find out that you're going to get a new car, the end. That's great. You know, what a wonderful life that is. Totally uh, boring to read, to read about, right? Totally boring to read about. You wouldn't want to read that in a short story, would you? No, there's no conflict there. There's no tension. There's nothing interesting going on. If your life is like that, that's probably a really good thing, but we don't want our fiction, certainly our fiction to be like that. We want things to juxtapose against each other, to contrast against each other, to, to butt heads against each other. That causes dilemma, 
tension, conflict, all of the things that serve as the fuel that drive a story forward. So conflict is just one example of this type of juxtaposition. And when I say conflict, now I'm talking about characters in conflict. It's only one type of juxtaposition, but it does create tension and it does tend to develop characters and make them more interesting as well. <clears throat> so in paper two, you are going to be concerned with identifying and defining and analyzing the primary conflict of your chosen short story. This conflict is this primary conflict is going to be the central most important conflict that the story deals with. It is the main conflict, the primary conflict that the protagonist, who is the main character, experiences. It's going to be that conflict that sort of rises above everything else and is dominant in the story. Now, short stories, even if they're really short, like say the story of an hour, um, they're almost always going to have multiple conflicts at work within them. Secondary conflicts, tertiary conflicts, you know, third level conflicts, quaternary, fourth level conflicts, etc. You know, there could be conflicts all the live long day happening in short stories. And of course, these conflicts usually will affect each other. Um, a secondary conflict is perhaps going to play an important role in shaping the primary conflict and vice versa. So, you know, there will always be multiple conflicts happening in even the shortest of stories. But your job, especially in paper two, is to identify and write about that one primary conflict. You may need to, you know, fall back on and, and write a little bit about some of these other conflicts in order to help characterize and help us understand and define the main conflict. And that's fine. But always keep your focus on that primary conflict. So when we talk about conflicts uh, with characters in stories, we really have two types. We have the external conflict. And the external conflict is usually the easier one to spot, usually the easier one to write about. In an external conflict, we have a protagonist that is in conflict with another character or some other external outside entity or force of some kind, okay? And then let me reiterate what I said earlier. When we're talking about primary conflicts, these are always, always going to involve the protagonist, the main character. So in an external primary conflict, we're going to have the protagonist. The main conflict of the story is going to be that protagonist in conflict with some sort of external thing or person outside of the protagonist, him or herself. So the most common example of this, of course, is character versus another character. And this is where we have the protagonist versus the antagonist come in, right? When we have an external conflict between the protagonist and another character, that other character, going to be a secondary character in a short story, that other character is the antagonist. And there may be more than one antagonist. It's possible. So when we have a conflict that is external, whether it's the primary one or not, um, usually it's going to be a character versus another character. There are stories, however, in which we see the protagonist in conflict with society. Um, we have stories where the protagonist is in conflict with nature. Uh, there's a really great example of this. It's not in our book, but you may have read it. It's a pretty common story to read in middle school and high school. Uh, it's called To Build a Fire by Jack London. It's all basically about a city slicker who thinks he's got what it takes to trek out into the um, Arctic wilderness with his dog uh, because he needs to he needs to be somewhere at a certain time and all of the locals are trying to convince him to stay and wait until uh, the weather turns better uh, but he insists on going out 
and uh, I won't spoil it for you, but it doesn't turn out well for him. <laughs> He's involved in an external conflict against nature that he doesn't win. Um, we can have characters versus more metaphysical things like fate, the notion of fate, uh, characters versus God or gods, character versus the universe. We, you know, we can certainly have stories like this too. Those are all examples of external conflicts. What is more complicated and therefore, frankly, more interesting, and I'll also say more common in literary fiction, is the internal conflict. This is when protagonists, and again, we're, we're really focusing on the primary conflict here, so that's why we're always talking about protagonists. Sure, secondary characters can be in conflict with other secondary characters, Secondary characters can be in conflict with, you know, uh, nature, you know, a rampaging bear, whatever. That's fine. But we're really talking here about the protagonist and the main conflict. When we have an, an, a primary conflict that's internal, here we have a protagonist that experiences conflict within themselves. The protagonist is going to be round. That's a term that we learned about in the previous slideshow about character. Um, and that character is going to have certain traits, personality traits, certain um, characteristics, certain urges or impulses, certain motivations. That's a really important word. You know, what is it that motivates characters to do what they do? A protagonist experiencing an internal conflict is going to have character traits or urges or motivations that are in conflict with other traits and urges and motivations, all within the same character, right? So that's why we call it internal. It's within the mind, within the heart, uh, maybe even within the spirit or the soul of, of the primary character. So it's really important to try, when we detect an internal conflict, it's really important to try to isolate the conflicting factors, okay? With, with an external conflict, it's a lot easier to see. Oh, this character A is in conflict with character B, or character A is in conflict with the society that she's grown up in, or, you know, character D is in, you know is in conflict with the the natural surroundings that he finds himself in. That's usually a little easier to see. Uh, it's a little bit more basic. Internal conflicts are more complicated because now we're we're having to parse out different aspects of the same character, different personality traits, different characteristics of the same character. So, uh, you know, when I was first being exposed to this in school, my teachers told me, well, if it's an internal conflict, then it's the character versus self or himself or herself or whatever. That's not enough. That, that simply is not enough. We cannot say that the, the conflict is about the character versus the character's own self. That, that isn't getting to the heart of the matter. We need to be more specific. We need to try to identify what are those character traits that are in conflict with each other. So here's an example, and this isn't from any specific short story that we've read. This is just something I came up with. We might say that the char we, we have a character who is involved in an internal conflict. Her motivation to care for her children is in conflict with her desire to run away and abandon all of her responsibilities, right? So she's got these competing motivations within her. She's motivated to care for her kids, but she's also got this, you know, wild hair. She's this free spirit, and she's also motivated to just abandon her kids, abandon her family, and run off and live her own life. And, and abandon all responsibilities and live a free, carefree, crazy life. Well, you know, guess what? There are people out there like that, right? And, you, you know, we may be one of them or we may be some of them, right? We have 
oh man, I really, you know, feel motivated to go to school and, you know, study and write papers and get good grades. But part of me just wants to hop on my motorcycle and, you know, go explore the Rocky Mountains and just say to hell with it all. These are, you know, welcome to the human race. This is what humans are like, right? We, we all have these conflicting factors, these conflicting character traits within us. Um, you know, we have the angel on one shoulder, the devil on the other shoulder to, to sort of simplify it. That's what internal conflict is all about. Here's another example. And again, this isn't from any specific short story that we're reading. Uh, the protagonist's tendencies to take chances and throw caution to the wind versus his innate need to lead a secure life. So I think you know, again, this is kind of similar to the previous example, right? We've got this urge to be responsible. We've got this urge to, you know, be safe and secure. Um, but we've also got these urges to take chances and to have adventures. And those things are in conflict with each other. And that makes life hard. It makes it um, difficult. Uh, sometimes it makes it tragic or sad, but it can also make it exciting. Um, it makes it interesting. That's ultimately what I'm getting at. So round characters have multiple personality traits, and oftentimes these are competing traits. And we see these competing traits shape a character over the course of a story. And sometimes that character will come to a certain decision or make a certain change based on all of these different traits and the conflicts between them. And that character might morph into or become a dynamic character. Again, uh, there's all sorts of possibilities here. We might have characters who are round. They have internal conflicts, but ultimately they're um, static. They don't change. Uh, we might have flat characters that um, experience maybe some fundamental level of internal conflict. It would have to be really simple because flat characters don't have very many competing traits, if any. They just have sort of a one one note character uh, summary to them. But there are, you know, it just depends on the short story. There are all kinds of possibilities. Uh, let me give you some examples from the stories, some of the stories that we've read. So in Cathedral, um, you know, uh, you'll, you'll read the sample paper number two or where I, I write about Bub, Bub's character. Um, you know, I, I say that even though he appears flat at the beginning, he's ultimately a round character. And of course, by the end of the story, we see that he's um, a dynamic character. He's made a, at least a, a, a little change. Hopefully it's the start of bigger things to come. Um, it may be a small sort of quiet moment um, in the universal scale of things, but for Bob, it's a pretty significant uh, change that he's made, a, per, per, a pretty significant discovery that he's made. So he's a dynamic character and his conflict is, is internal. Yeah, he does have external conflicts. He's got an external conflict with his wife. He's got an external conflict with Robert. Uh, he has an external conflict with, you know, life in general, I think. Um, but ultimately, the story is concerned with his internal conflict. And I think his internal conflict is his um, sort of tendency to just get by in life and, you know, not be too, uh, not ask too many questions, not, not try to do too much work to make himself a better person, not work on his relationships. You know, he seems to be pretty happy with his status quo of, of, you know, leading a tolerable home life that he, you know, ultimately uh, drinks away and smokes away at the end of the day versus his desire, his sort of burgeoning desire to expand his life and lead perhaps a more meaningful, more contemplative life. And we see the beginning of that life um, sort of opening up uh, there at the end of the story. So I think it's safe to say that that the primary conflict of, of cathedral is going to be an internal one although that internal conflict we understand it by also recognizing the secondary uh, external conflicts that are that are present in the story uh in the story of an hour um you know 
most of the, I mean, the title of the story is the story of an hour. It is literally the story of a woman sitting in her room for an hour, okay, um, having these intense thoughts and feelings. You know, she's surrounded by some secondary characters at the beginning and at the end. Uh, we really can't say that she's in a primary external conflict with another character. I think it would be safe to say that she um, experiences secondary conflict with Brentley, her husband, although we don't see that in the story. We're just sort of told a little bit about it. Um, it you know, maybe Louise is in conflict with society. I think that's I think that's safe to say that's an external conflict. You know, she's a she's a young woman. She's married. Doesn't have kids yet, but she seems you know she seems to be married in this sort of settled down relationship. And uh, you know, even if we don't know the year that the story was published, by the way, you can determine that by looking at the very end of the story. The year of publication is is indicated there. Uh, but I think even without knowing anything about when the story was written, you know, we can tell that Louise is sort of bowing to society's pressure to to get married and lead a domestic life, and she's rebelling against that. So yeah, sure, I agree. She's got an external conflict against society and uh, the social norms that she feels constrained by. But ultimately, the primary conflict of the story is an internal one. And of course, when she's up there in that bedroom, you know, she's in her own mind pretty much the entire time. And it seems that she is fighting against this understanding that is slowly dawning on her uh, because this understanding seems so radical. You know, this notion that that love is really not all it's cracked up to be. Love involves, uh, you know, uh, uh, people sort of enforcing their private wills upon other people. You know, even if it's for the good, it's still, you know, forcing the other person to give up some of their freedom, so to speak. Uh, this is what Louise is thinking to herself, not to say that it's a universal fact or truth, but this is certainly uh, Kate Chopin's idea that she seems to want to get across in the story. And it's certainly an idea that Louise Mallard embraces ultimately in that, you know, so-called exalted moment of perception that she has, um, that brief moment of illumination, right? Um, so, yeah, she's in conflict with what's expected of her, but that's all internalized. She's in conflict with the idea of being in love. You know, she is in love with Brentley. She loves Brentley, but she says also that she is oftentimes not in love with him, does not love him. Um, so she's wrestling with this internally. And that is, of course, what the story really focuses on. So that's another example of an internal conflict. Uh, I'm going to uh, put forth the the uh, claim that in most literary fiction, uh, the primary conflict is going to be internal. That is a rule of thumb. It is not universally true. Uh, and I think there are certainly some cases where internal and external conflicts are so closely woven together that you really need to sort of consider both of them at the same time. And I certainly think that that can be true. Okay, so uh, I hope that helps you understand a little bit about conflict. As I said in the character presentation, if you have any questions about these terms, uh, if you want to know whether you're using them right, if you want to, you know, bounce off, you know, an analysis or a, an interpretation, well, I think the conflict in this story is external or internal. Is that right? Um, I'll try to give you a little hand with that. Uh, you know, you're always wanting to sort of uh, Make your stance known, determine, you know, tell us what it is you think, whether or not the characters are flat, static, dynamic, round, whatever, whether the conflict is internal, external. If it is internal or external, or it will be one or the other, but depending upon which one it is, you'll want to tell us what is in conflict with what, X versus Y, that sort of statement. If you want to bounce any of that off me, that's fine, but please try to give me some textual evidence. You know, why is it that you think that? what parts of the story are are informing you of that and of course you'll need to write that out ultimately 
in your paper number two. Um, last thing I'll say before I'll go is that this um, type of thing is what we're going to be doing, of course, in our paper three and our paper four. We're going to be dealing with other types of uh, elements of fiction, setting and narrator point of view, uh, but the same rules will apply. You'll be needing to define concepts. You'll be needing to pin those things down in the story that you choose and then providing textual evidence as well as explanation in order to back up your claims.